I must be hallucinating. I can see a mirage of a, a fully sustainable city running on renewable energy. I'm going crazy in this heat. Well, indeed, this is the start of a fully sustainable city. This is Mazdar city in Abu Dhabi. Mazdar is the Arabic word for source. The project was started in 2006 and phase one, a million square meters, will be completed by 2015. The plan is for the entire city to be powered by renewable energy. And the project will be finished in 2025 when it will be home to over 40,000 people. So I want to find out what they're doing and what they hope to achieve. Christopher, we're in a, a, an atmosphere now that most people in Northern Europe would think this is where solar panels would work because it's quite warm. You've got a lot of different types of solar panels and, and solar energy going on here. Can you sort of talk me through the, the basis of what we've got? I mean, these here, I vaguely recognise. Yeah, you might recognise some of these. I think most people would. This is called concentrated solar power. You take a parabola and focus the energy on a tube in the middle of the parabola. And this generates about 400 degrees Celsius. So that's like a curved mirror, and yes. all the sunlight is bouncing off that onto one point. Onto one point in the middle. And that exactly. heats it up to 400 degrees. All saved up in a, in a thermal tank of, of oil, usually, right. which retains the thermal energy. And then you can apply that to, to the different purposes. So then you could run a generator from it, for instance. Absolutely. Is that something you could do? Yeah. Right. right here on this side, we're actually making cooled water from thermal energy. Back here we have a big absorption chiller, which is a big refrigerator. Yeah. We take the heat to drive that cycle and it cools water down, which is sent into the buildings behind us right. and cools the offices. Right. Which is, uh, now I'm here, I really appreciate going into a cool office. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and then behind yeah. us here, <laughs> what, this is a, another slightly different system. Well, here we have another way to generate the heat. Uh, and there's cost benefits in each system, right? So you have a very high temperature, but a more costly system here. It's a lower cost system, easier to install. And this heats water directly by using vacuum panels. And the vacuum insulates so you capture all the thermal energy. And you generate about 180 degrees Celsius water, which is kept under pressure so you retain the heat. But then serves the same purpose by driving the refrigeration cycle. So these are two different ways we're trying to benchmark against each other to create cooling. And I mean, do you envisage that at some stage, you could, whichever system you decide on could be upscaled to, to the to Absolutely. the scale that we could, could cool the whole city. I mean, this is, is actually, you're, you're looking at the real purpose of MassDAR. We have the Research Institute, which gives us the theory. Then we do demonstrators like this, pilot projects, to test out the theories and optimize the engineering. And once we found the optimal solution, we actually commercialize it. So we right. take the whole value chain of clean energy. Right. So if this is how you cool, yes. how then do you, can you generate energy as well? Well, we just use a different configuration. Uh, we use photovoltaic panels, and uh, we can show you uh, one of those power plants uh, over on the other side of this site. Excellent. Uh, that's a little bit more impressive than what I've got on my roof. That is phenomenal. How, how, what area does that cover? Well, this covers about 22 hectares. And do you know how what that generates sort of on an annual basis? If you... This is a 10 megawatt system and generates about 17,000 megawatt hours a year. This is meant, of course, to power a large community, right. a small city, something of that size. Right. So, I mean, at the moment, the, the, what you've developed of Mazdar City now is numerous very large buildings, which in a traditional sense would be huge energy hogs, would be using enormous amounts of energy. Yeah. And I notice you've got, there are solar panels on the roof, Absolutely. but they're, they're not presumably producing enough for those buildings. Not quite enough. Actually, the, the site here was developed as we were constructing. So we were already contributing uh, PV power to Abu Dhabi right. while the buildings were going on. Now we're delivering uh, 10 megawatts of energy. The, the building site uses between two and three, right. and, and one megawatt of that comes from the rooftop solar. Oh, so they are? Oh, so that's what, yeah. So, so about a third of the energy use is actually from right. the rooftop solar. And this is high intensity energy. You know, we've got research labs, uh, microscopic labs, biology labs, all kinds of high intensity stuff going on there. Right. So it's actually pretty well covered. Right. 
And then, so this is producing way at the more. moment way more than you need. Way but then, it, when the need. city expands and you've got more exactly. buildings, you exactly. need more. Actually, the next site, we've got enough experience with this now that we're scaling up uh, even larger. Right. So this was the largest installation of its uh, kind at the time in the Middle East. Now we're doing a 100 megawatt system out in the desert wow. and then connect that to the grid. Right. This has been the basis to generate the policies for renewable energy uh, here in Abu Dhabi. In the UK, for instance, they're, they're, it's suggested that a solar panel will last between 25 and 30 years. Is there any difference here with the, the greater intensity of the sun and the greater heat? Does that reduce their lifespan or is it much the same? That's what we like to find out. This is right. one of the reasons we pioneer this type of installation because there are the theoretical decays uh, with, with heat and the like. Over the last two years, we haven't noticed the decay as much as would have been predicted. Right. So actually, we're, we're pretty optimistic right. about the installation. So is the long-term plan, Christopher, to make the, the, the city self-sufficient effectively or, or generate enough energy to run the whole city? Is that the long-term plan? The interesting thing is that you have to, in order to do that, the whole experiment here, the whole work and the progress of, of the Mastar City uh, installation is to match demand to supply. And we learn each time we build a new building, each time we do a new technology, how to do that better and better and better all the time. We're really trying to be the front runner for the region on how to produce energy in a sustainable way right. and how to build buildings and create technology in the buildings so that you can match the way you use energy to how much energy you actually have. And this is really the whole trick of being sustainable and having a green city. Right, so you don't just build a building like you would have done 25 years ago and it goes, it needs a massive power plant and all that exactly. stuff. You actually think, how do we build a building that uses less exactly. energy? Uh, today, we use a lot of passive techniques in order to minimize the cooling energy we have to use, for example. So the buildings are closer, so they create shade. Uh, the rooftop PV creates shade for the building as well. And we orient the whole city so as to capture the prevailing winds and use those for cooling effects. And in fact, if you stand in the middle of Master Our City, and compare that to downtown Abu Dhabi, we're 10 degrees Celsius cooler wow. than, than a spot in Abu Dhabi. And that's a lot of energy to save. So the combination of doing everything the right way actually gets you the point of carbon neutrality and sustainability. Oh, it sounds like what you're going to end up with is a city that is sustain energy sustainable and produces through it more energy than, than it needs, that's which exactly you can then the export objective. elsewhere. Exactly. So it's not can you make enough, it's you'll make too much. Exactly, and it's not just a drawing board exercise, it's continually learning, continually researching, continually getting better at that. And that's why we built the Institute first, so they can provide the research to do the next wave of technology, and we can apply that as well. Yusuf, I just want to say I love what I'm seeing here, it's fantastic. Can you, can you tell me what your role is here? I am the director of Mazar City Operation, where we are responsible to be sure that everything delivered as per our vision and our criteria and uh, design uh, guideline. Because often with, with modern buildings, they're done on a big open space with big gaps. This is all closed in. And, we're, and where we are now is cool and there's a breeze. I can feel a lovely breeze. Yeah. When we start to design the city and how we can do it, so we go back the history with our old Arabic cities where the streets are narrow and where the shaded each other. And so we are using the same concept, but in, with the new modern technologies, where uh, the advanced technology came in. Our idea is to make the city is more as much as we can pedestrian friendly. Because I mean, I think that's what a lot of people uh, around the world will think. They, they will think of the Emirates countries as very oil rich. And, that's, and so it's very much to do with oil and fossil fuels. And what you're doing here is, is surprising. Different. But at the end of the day, we have to think of the future as well. So uh, the future is uh, environmentally, uh, we have to be very environment. So we keep, we preserve these lands, this uh, earth to, to our future generation. So when they come in the future, they will see that, yes, we, we thought about them from now. We don't leave them just uh, in a polluted area. Yes. Because there's a lot of experiments going on here with energy, you know, renewable energy and energy storage so that you're doing tests here that other people can learn Actually, from. Actually, we want Mazdar City to be the, the largest lab for the renewable energy. Mm -hmm. So we are open with any companies, they claim that they have some technologies which can work, and we give them the piece of land infrastructure, and we together jointly test it and see how it will perform in our uh, environment. The, one of the problems that people criticize with new buildings is the supply chain, where the materials come from, what you do with the building waste. One of our role in Mazda that we have to educate as well the local market in how to be sustainable. Right. So one of the criteria we are using now that we have to find supplier or manufacturer where they have to do things locally. So we reduce the CO2 emission of transportation as well. So we are yeah. taking a lot of steps, not only for the production or the nature of the material, but also transportation and 
so on. So if you go inside Mazar City, you will see a lot of, uh, we have a recycle center where all the material used in the construction to be reused again right. within the building. So this one is uh, saving money as well as saving the environment by itself. The, so the future plans, I've seen the model, which is yeah. wonderful, but uh, so it, it is a lot bigger than now. So there's no, at the moment there's no residential streets like houses and streets built yet. Nearest future we're gonna, we, are, we have planned uh, some new residential will come very soon, but it will be announced soon, which is around 500 uh, apartments inside Mazar City, uh, plus the expansion of the institute, which is uh, almost double the size where we are now. Right. Plus we have some other uh, third party investor where they are starting, they will start uh, next month to construct some other facilities like uh, a data center, like schools, like uh, we have uh, one hotel and we have one hospital will coming soon. So we, we are starting yeah. in, in that way and we uh, want to share with the third party investor. We don't want it to be just the government who is building, but right. now we are in a position that the other investor believe that this will work yeah. from a commercial point of view. Yeah. It's, it is uh, viable now. Right. Yeah. So they're now starting to come he in. Start, and they are uh, soon you will see, inshallah, something going on. <laughs> yeah. Mazdar City is truly an amazing place, and I've still got so much more to learn about it. Join me next time on Fully Charged for our season finale as we continue to explore the city of the future. <laughs>